two. Good evening. I now call to order the Equity Committee meeting with the Equity Advisory Council for Thursday, May 25th, 2023. In accordance with board policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, committee and council members will state their name before speaking. Ms. Cox, Please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Harvey? Present. Ms. Frempong? Present. Ms. Lichter? Present. Oh, um, I put out. Ms. Cox, please call the names of those staff members on the equity committee attending today's meeting. Mr. Handy? Present. Dr. Yarbrough? And do you want me to list all the other members? Now? Are there any other staff members slated to attend? Well, I'll just so go through. Ms. Harvey, oh, yes. I'm sorry. So th that's all the staff except for the staff who are part of the council. Okay, great. So, Ms. Cox, will you please call the role of the Equity Advisory Council members participating in today's meeting? Ms. Shinawi? Ms. Mackle? Ms. Ivanovic? Mr. Schiffer? Present. Mr. Collins? Mr. Fisher, Ms. Sibley, Ms. Alonzo, Dr. Sullivan, Mr. Dunlap, Ms. Harden, Ms. Valencia Banks, Ms. Denmeyer, Present. Ms. Brewster. Present. Ms. Bailey, Mr. Bailey, sorry. Present. Mr. Mr. Jennings. Present. Ms. Williams. Ms. Ditt. Ms. Tillman. Ms. Weber. Ms. Norton. Present. Ms. Cumins. Ms. Scott. Present. Ms. Hansen or Mr. Man Manny Hansen. Ms. English. Ms. Collington Purcell. Ms. Stewart Sicking, Sick, Sicking, Ms. Stansbury, Dr. Sample, Mr. Tillman, Mr. Jensen, Ms. Jones, Ms. Tulahan. Ms. Stiff, Dr. Simpkins, and that's it. Thank you. Are there any council members who have joined who did not hear their name called in the roll? That would be me, Dr. Stitt. Welcome, Dr. Stitt. And as well, Homer McCall. Thank you, Mr. McCall. Okay, so the first item of new business is a presentation. I'm sorry. 
I would say Sharon Blake is present. Thank you. The first item of new business is a presentation on uh, the Equity Advisory Council Planning Group updates. And for that, I call on Ms. Makita Scott. Great. Thank you so much for that, um, Ms. Harvey. And I would like to thank everyone here in attendance, uh, council members and <clears throat> members of the Equity Committee. So this is where um, we are giving you all an update on our Equity Advisory Council Planning Group, who we are, what we do, um, we are comprised of council members uh, that represent the full geographic region of Baltimore County. Um, we um, previously, Ms. Frimpong did a survey of all of us um, and we gave what were our issues with equity and ways that we would like to work with the committee and the board to address these issues of inequities at BCPS. Uh, you heard the list of our current planning group members. Like I said, we're comprised of BCPS administrators, teachers, staff, students, um, TABCO, education advisory, and community members. So we represent the full geographic region of the county. The purpose of the equity uh, council is the following. Um, to increase achievement, access, and opportunity by celebrating the diversity of our students through inclusive instruction, support, academic, social, and emotional, and identification that creates advocates for and promotes a sense of belonging among students. This will put students on the path towards becoming independent, active, engaged learners. So that's our purpose statement. That's why we're here. That's why we were created. Diversity, so I'm going to the next slide, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Diversity is an asset. It's not a tool to identify and predict student success or bar student achievement. Diversity is our asset. So, um, and we have a lot of diversity at, at BCPS. Um, the next slide speaks to our current top priorities, our CTP. A, academic achievement of marginalized students. B, behavior and consequences, disparities in consequences for black boys, males, and the impact of exclusionary discipline on academic achievement. C, holding space for discussions, being able to call in others, partners, interracial pairs, and advocates. D, recruitment and retention of teachers and academic assistants considers, excuse me, consider HBCUs and PWIs with support programs for teachers of color. E, intersectionality and intersecting identities, a framework of identities, different identities may have different needs. So our priorities and member interviews. So um, Ms. Rimpong did interviews with um, everybody that was a part of the, that is a part of the council to get um, what our priorities are. Where are we going? What are we looking at? And I think this is an excellent time um, to do this and, and I'm glad that it was done. What does this priority mean to you? That was one question. What are the issues? What is BCPS doing right or what is BCPS doing well? How do we improve upon what we're doing? What existing programs internal to BC, BCPS or external can we model or extend to this issue? What new mo new programs or models and what are the benchmarks for improvement or how do we know when we have met the goal for this priority? So um, I'm sorry, we can go to the next slide. Yes, that's what I was just reading from. So we can go to the next slide, academic achievement and marginalized students. <clears throat> so this is um, our under our priorities. A, academic achievement of marginalized students. Smaller class sizes for marginalized students who need additional academic support. Focus on resources for hands-on staff. Programs at high school where internships can be done while in high school and in college. Deal with implicit and personal biases of teachers, adults, and or administrators. The impact of COVID on marginalized students. Equity framework to create more successful students also must include a social element. B, 
the next slide, behavior and consequences. And um, if I'm going through this, um, I, I, at the end of this, we'll be able to discuss and take questions. So I just thought it would be easier to go through everything and then get questions at the end. So again, B, behavior and consequences. Disproportionality in suspension rates of black male students, finding middle ground, make consequences appropriate level for children of color, be intentional about choosing staff that look like the students, gender, race, black boy joy and genius, um, in equity training, sharing more examples of experiences of children and parents of children, tracking with grid ongoing lists, and sign off required by the superintendent's office. C, and again, these are the priorities that um, we were looking at that we came up with as a council that we see as inequities. Holding space for discussions, equity action groups, work in collaboration with existing groups, teams that support students, overseen by the equity specialists for the zone, work through difficult situations, conversations where reporting persons can feel safe and not feel judged, events, information, shared needs to be confidential, and it does not replace the grievance process that is currently available. D, recruitment and retention of teachers and academic assistants, incongruence between student and staff demographics, administrators, school building leaders not looking like the students that they serve, Support is needed for black administrators. Mentor programs for staff of color. Lack of teachers means that students do not have services. Create a pipeline of teachers through students in BCPS. Systemized partnerships with local HBCUs, Morgan, Coppin, Bowie, etc. E, intersectionality and intersection, intersecting identities. Equity liaison. Does a student have a connection at the school in the school community that he or she can turn to for support? COVID impact on minoritized communities? Disaggregate the data by demographics, IEP resources for special education students, teacher student relationships. So these are the issues that we came um, that were most pertinent that we pulled out from the meetings and the interviews that were done. And um, I know I kind of went over that rather quickly, but um, again, we thank you for your time. And also I would like to thank the group and our members for their time and their effort with this important work so that we could have the opportunity to present you with this information. Um, now, out of this, we would like to, it's not just, I know we've done gathering of information, there's been the equity audit, but our next steps is that we would like to work with you to come up with ways to actually put in place policies or um, programs that can address many of the issues, if not all of the issues that we just reviewed and went over. So with that, I'll open it up if you all have any questions for us um, or would like to know additional information. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Scott, for the presentation and for to the council for all of this work that you've done to help us kind of put all of our issues in categories and start to begin to plan to work on them. And I think that was my question. Had the, has the council begun to think about what in each of these broad, these larger categories, what are the things that that you would recommend that we start working on, and what are the timeframes that we're looking at? Are there things that we can say we we're going to start working on for the upcoming academic year, uh, from small goals to large goals? What are those things that the council is identifying? Uh, in those ways. Certainly, I can I can start off and um, I, I can't see the um, the chat, so I guess if anyone has any questions, um, um, hopefully Ms. Harvey, you can see that. OK, <laughs> great. <laughs> um, and if someone else has something they would like to say, please. Um, I don't want to hog up. OK, I can start off. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that we looked at um, in particular is a lot of these are impacted through our policies. And one of the um, examples that I looked at was like our, our CTE programs, um, looking at a policy and um, 
looking at something like as far as our magnet policy, how does that apply to our CTE programs? Um, for instance, it was said by one of our um, council members that it's up to the decision of the principal um, for a CTE program at a, at a various school. Um, maybe that's something that should be uh, at under the level of the board for looking at, and that would be our magnet policy. What determines a CTE program as opposed to it being at the discretion of a, a school principal, it's it's more so like what determines where we have our magnet programs. Um, also looking at our transportation policy. Um, and again, that goes under CTE. Various programs, CTE programs have um, certification that may be offered at various programs at one location but not offered at another location, even though it's the same CTE program. So looking at a transportation policy, because that in itself is an inequity. If a student is at a school and they're taking, uh, uh, I believe the example was a baking program, but they're not able to get the same certification that a student enrolled in a CTE baking program at Solar's Point would be eligible for, then how do we address that? And that could be through our transportation policy. Um, Mr. Handy, if you're there, would you be able to speak about that more? That, and that's just one example. Uh, yes, I could. And also, um, I do know, I certainly could. I know that uh, Dr. Grubbs, our CT coordinator, is also part of the council. Um, I know, I believe he's joined. I know he was having some issues earlier. Um, so if you're okay with that, uh, Ms. Scott and Ms. Harvey, I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Grubbs maybe to speak to that a little bit. Certainly, oh, please. Okay, all right. Dr. Grubbs, are you able to come off mute? All right, I think he's, they might be trying. And I'll check Mr. Corns as uh, Dr. Grubbs, is his mic enabled? And he also, I think he said he called in, so I don't know if that would affect his ability to. I, I just sent a request to him to join, so maybe he'll okay. be able to connect on the okay. teams. Mr. Handy, gotcha. I have um, I have two dial-in numbers. One is displayed as mute, but I'm unable to uh, affect that. So, um, yeah, it would okay. be uh, uh, best if he could join that way, but I'm I'm not sure if, uh, what number that is that is uh, displaying. Got you. Okay. All right, so I'll, I'll just speak in general terms. We can get more detail from Dr. Groves maybe at a later date. But right, so if you look at our, our transportation um, magnet policy just in general, um, George, Rush, George Washington Carver Center um, is the only high school, magnet high school that will transport students from anywhere in the district. So we look at one thing that came up in the council, we look at our culinary programs, which we have at Western Tech, uh, Carver Center, Eastern Tech, and Solis Point Tech. Out of those four schools, only Solace Point Tech has a baking and pastry program. So if a student were outside the transportation zone for Solace Point Tech and they wanted that baking and pastry program and the credentials that come along with it, um, they could gain entry to the program through the magnet process. But then if uh, depending on where they live, they may not have any transportation. So that speaks to what you know, Ms. Scott alluded to. So we talk about, and I know there's a plan, like I said, at, at a later date, maybe we can have Dr. Grubbs talk about the, the five-year plan, which does speak to the equity and the placement of CTE programs around um, BCPS. Um, however, the way we're set up now, uh, we have programs in certain locations, but there's really no means of transportation um, for, some pro for some students to access it, depending on their, their zip code or their residence. So is the thought that the first step in this process is to look at how we provide transportation to magnet schools that don't offer countywide transportation? Is that the first step in this process? Because you just mentioned a five year plan to look at just the magnet programs across the county in general. Is is am I hearing that correctly or? So I guess I would say for. Oh, I don't know that, that. Was that Dr. Grubb? I don't know if you can hear me now. I, I hopefully I'm unmuted. So we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. I'm so sorry. I'm I was <laughs> listening the whole time, but I, I couldn't unmute. So, uh, Doug, is it okay? Did you want me to jump in? Uh sure. Yep. 
Um, yeah, so I really first I just want to say um, sincere appreciation for acknowledging CTE at the same level of magnet policies. Um, Doug was mentioning our five-year plan. Um, our first five-year plan was to get uh, each one of the zones to have all 10 career clusters. Um, Doug uh, initiated that plan. We just finished that plan up. We're pleased to share all 10 career clusters are in every single zone. Uh, but that doesn't mean that it's always accessible to students because our programs vary uh, by high school. Um, one of the systems that we would like to look at is uh, Montgomery County. Um, it doesn't matter where you live in the school system. Um, you can live at Hereford and transportation is still provided to the diesel program at Dundalk High School, for example. Um, you know, we're hoping with board policy that we can fix some of that equity and access issues. Um, and that's, um, you know, we've done a nice job of moving programs around the school system, uh, but still getting the kids to the various programs uh, is, is a really important um, next step for us. Um, the other one that was mentioned is uh, we have great relationships with principals, um, but we have um, challenges from times uh, with closing of programs down simply by not scheduling the third or the fourth course of a program of study. Um, and uh, magnet is protected, and many of our programs are magnet, uh, but something like 70% of our programs are not magnet. Um, and so we would like that same level of, of protection so that um, a principal has to work closely with us and the board, like magnet programs, um, to make sure that those programs are not shut down um, simply because of scheduling and things like that. So, Doug, I don't know if I hit everything. Um, I caught parts of the question. I'm happy to hear more. I, I, yeah, so, Ms. Harvey, may I? And <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah, so Dr. Grove, thank you for your comments. Um, I do want to go back, I guess, to the global question that I heard Ms. Harvey ask, and that's about really the, the council under Ms. Scott's leadership really bringing you a comprehensive set. So I think Dr. Grove's outlined one aspect. So if you heard, of course, it, it would have uh, policy implications and also um, sounds like some budget implications. So if you look at where we are now and what Ms. Scott presented and she and I have already started talking about, you know, what the work the council can do this summer. So, you know, when next school year runs, runs um, rolls around that we can have a, you know, comprehensive package uh, for you all to easily, you know, go through around uh, policy and budget implications for these five uh, priority areas that, that she presented. Is that fair to say, Ms. Scott? Yes, and so I, if I could jump back in, that was um, that is fair to say because the CTE that is but one example, and so that's why I felt I thought that was a, that was a, the best example to give to show what the policy in action and on the ground what that translates into. So uh, varying different CTE programs, different um, locations, children not being able to go to those locations. And then also, um, like Dr. Grubb had, had, had said, you know, looking at the model in Montgomery County, but making sure that because we have so many CTE programs that they fall and have the same protections as our magnet programs. Because as he said, the CTE programs are really um, magnet programs. So that, in, that, like you said, has an implication as far as with the budget as far as with policy and um, as, as far as with the, the board oversight. So and that just shows the intersection and that's just one example. Would it be OK to, I guess, sort of um, with Mr. Handy to follow up to give you our recommendations to um, address that along with other um, issues that we saw or that um, we outlined? I think so. I think you all have done such a comprehensive job. There's a lot of areas here that uh, we need to address. And I am not, you know, I think it would be a great idea for us to get these things as you plan them out so that we can start working on uh, implementation, especially the impact it has, like you said, on budget and policy and all of those things on an ongoing and rolling basis as opposed to getting this humongous one plan and then trying to figure out where we start. I think as as the Equity Council, um, you know, 
creates plans and makes recommendations in any particular area that it would be good for the equity committee and the board to have that information so that we can start to look at it from all of those varying perspectives. Uh, do other board members have um, feedback regarding that? Chair Lichter? Right. I'm not sure if it's exactly regarding it, but um, first, thank you for the report. I really like how detailed and specific the um, your bullets were as far as really being true action items. I'm just trying to think about how does, how did you foresee, um, Ms. Scott, the work of the equity committee? You guys are the council. How do you see, or how would you want to see, like I see like this could be our focus. Like how, how do we take the work and the recommendations and the action steps proposed by the council and bring that in to be the focus of the work of our equity committee? Um, did you think of any ideas about that, especially with your background of being on this committee at one mm -hmm. point? Yeah, so <clears throat> when I was in your position, I looked at the equity council as an advisory arm to the equity committee because right. these are the folks that are on the ground in the schools and can bring to the committee things that were going on. Um, like when I when the committee was first started, it was before COVID happened. So the council was very instrumental in bringing real life examples of what was actually happening at schools in the mm -hmm. classroom with students to the committee so that we could use that um, when we were discussing how we were going to go forward and what ad equity actually looked like in the age of COVID. So I would say that the council would continue to um, act as an advisory, but also the equity committee really, um, you know, taking the, the leadership with our input on looking at policy with an equity lens. I know Mae gave out a lot of the equity lenses and I put them on everybody's desk, um, but um, as the equity lens is updated, looking at everything that we do, policy, um, the budget, is it equitable? Are we looking at it with an equity lens and using the council, us, to help you with that process? Um, before the next, uh, that's another thing, looking at, at the budget before that is actually um, drafted or when it comes out again. Working with us on the council to look at an equity lens to see these issues as far as recruitment and um, uh, some of the other things that we talked about, academic achievement. How is that being reflected in our budget? And how are we being equitable in the application of it? So I don't I don't know. I hope that answers your question. That was how I looked at it when I um, set it up. Yeah, I'm just trying to think through. Um, I'm just trying to think through how we start actually doing the work. So OK, that's that, that, that's my next. And like and then when you say with policy, do these go under transportation policies do they go under like just for this one example that you talked about as far as the cte because it's a good one to kind of brainstorm you yeah. know do we look it through the lens of transportation po policies do we look at it through the lens of you know magnets and cte or and i and i know i should know this does our equity 100 policy have a rule to it or is it just a policy i don't think there's a rule to it correct i don't believe there is a rule doug right. can you confirm i think yes, we should Right. Yes, you are correct. It's just a rule. Right. Yes. So is some of this because the rule is how we how we implement the policy. So does some of this not come under like transportation, but truly come under the, the you know, with the equity policy? Do we start putting some rules into it to make sure that all of the language that's in the policy has an implementation component? Does that make sense? Just i just trying to figure out where does this fit that doesn't get hidden, that it, it truly is the focus. I Go can ahead. respond to Doug also, you can, if you could speak to the rule. Um, the, the first question that you asked is that that's where it intersects. It would come under, as, as I see it, um, mm -hmm. it would come under the magnet um, policy. Uh, that would be one part, but then it would also be a portion that would also come under the transportation policy. So I think that it would be examining both of those. And Doug, if you could speak to the rule mm -hmm. or the lack of the rule. Sure, um, right. So th that is, that's been under discussion um, throughout this school year. We are continuing to look at that. So um, hopefully we'll move in a direction where there is a rule. Um, now the rule would probably be more global in nature. So I'm thinking about, you know, Ms. Lecter's question, 
I'm thinking, you know, there's policy, you know, with our beliefs, there's the rule with the the drive the practice, as you mentioned, Ms. Lecter, then there's the actual practice. So I, I'll, I do want some time to go look in this particular instance. I, I, I am wondering like how it is that, you know, we have a structure that allows transportation like district wide, you know, to one high school, but no other one. So is that is that actually in a rule somewhere? Is it in a policy or is that simply the practice? that's been happening. So to me, to answer your question around a specific example, that would mean, you know, me as staff, you know, the appropriate staff members finding the answer for that and then being able to frankly disrupt it to get a more and you know, a more equitable experience for all of our students. Um, but I, I do, um, so I guess I'm looking at this like the immediate, seeing mm -hmm. what's in existing policy and rule, but also hopefully we'll we'll get to one day where there is a, a zero 100 rule that'll help um, drive our practice even even more uh, succinctly. OK, thank you. You're welcome. So I think uh, in the academic achievement of marginalized students, um, CTPs, their top priorities, you mentioned an equity framework. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've you had some discussions around this about how we because we do have the made questions around ask yourself these questions when you're applying someone to apply an equity lens, but we don't really have a tool to measure. So we can have those conversations and answer those questions, but at the end of that, we don't really have anything that says, yes, this meets the standard. This crosses the threshold and we can say it is an equitable practice or we don't. So when you talked about equity framework in that top priority, can you tell us what the council was envisioning in terms of a framework? Yeah. Well, for me. OK, great, I'm off mute. Yeah, so I think with that, <clears throat> And any council member can also um, feel free to chime in because I'm speaking how, how I feel we saw it, was creating the actual framework um, so that we can have something that we can use to measure and to work to make sure that we are being equitable for our students. Um, not just looking at um, how it's supposed to work, but also including the social element. So that also leads to like, it's not a one size fits all approach. The social element as far as what works maybe in the West Zone would be different maybe than the Hereford Zone, but creating an equitable framework that would apply to both zones so that it would be across BCPS. So it's kind of being equal, but also equitable because equal isn't always equitable. So that was where that was getting to. It's not the one size fits all framework. Does that make sense? But um, also starting out as far as like on a high level, larger level, and then distilling it down. Does that make sense? I'm not sure if I hope that was clear. OK. Thank you. I, I was really interested in how we measure that so that we can have some uh, veracity around what we're saying meets an equitable standard for across across the district, whatever it looks like. So I appreciate that. Thank you. And also taking into account that what may be equitable in one area, what that may look like in one area is not necessarily the same framework for another area. So yes. we're, we're, we're addressing it each individually. Um, I think also where this can also lead into is our equity liaisons and um, which I had mentioned a little bit further down, but that leads into the equitable framework. Um, Doug, could you talk a little bit about our equity liaisons? Because with that, that makes sure that equity is being applied or whatever issues are being addressed are being specific to that school and that community. Yes, sure. Yep. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Scott. So equity liaisons are certainly um, a major part of, of the work, I guess the vision of my team and me, the Department of Equity and Cultural Proficiency, to really make sure we're, we're building capacity within schools to take more equitable action. Um, I did want to speak a bit to um, Ms. Harvey's question about the accountability piece. It really goes back to um, Ms. Lichter's question about the rule. So of course a rule would help us with that measure that you talked about, Ms. Harvey. Um, I, I do say if you look at the current policy, the standard section, do give us some some guidance on the measure, if you will. So one thing I would like, and um, and I see Dr. Stitt mentioning the PD we do, all of the PD we do for staff includes um, 
an analysis of 0100. One thing we're trying to do is make sure that all staff realize that 0100 pertains to all of our work. And that's a tool that we can use along with, you know, the MAVE equity questions to really check ourselves. So that those standards do give us a guide on whether we're really being equitable in our actions um, or, or if we're just carrying out the status quo, which we know has resulted in many inequities. So um, one thing we're trying to do is get everyone to realize that documents for all of us and to lean on that as much as possible as we do work and make decisions. Um, and we're also doing some work around like executive staff um, to really bring the questions into all of our work. Like we have a um, we call it a system wide achievement team and uh, really based on a question that came from you, Ms. Harvey, after your question of, you know, related to this topic, we now include a discussion around the equity lens questions as part of that approval process and that system wide achievement team. So um, to me, as you said, we got to act with urgency and look for things we can put into place that will, you know, continue to guide our work. But I, I do feel like uh, we're, we're making some steps at least in, in and we have to go beyond awareness, but that is a big part of it, raising awareness across all staff. But yes, um, acting with urgency is certainly um, part of the plan as well. Okay. Um, and as far as the MAVE equity lens is, um, I wasn't sure. Um, Ms. Harvey, are you the representative to the MAVE um, equity committee, the state equity committee? I, I am not. Oh, okay. Okay, I don't know if, if um, uh, Chair Lichter had already assigned somebody to that. So, okay, that was where I was. Yeah, I think Dr. Savoy is. Um, I'd have to double check. Great. Okay. Um, I was just saying, as far as the, they have a lot of updates there as far as the equity lens, um, because I know it's probably been updated or it may be the same. I'm not sure. Thank you. In the question, Are there you any the other questions? Question? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Ms. Scott, were you referring to the questions being updated or just their information on their site? No, there's an equity lens card that they gave right, out. Right, that's the questions. Right, yes. okay, I don't know if they're updated. Doug, do you, Mr. Handy, do you know, or that was the ones that you shared with us, were they an updated version or were they the one they've been no. using for a while? Yeah, they're, they're the same. Um, okay. Ms. Lichter, yeah, the same. Yeah, we just had them printed, um, so they were right there on the day I asked for you all, um, conveniently placed. But um, and we could always print more, but they are the same. They are the same question. Yeah, I think I think we could use them, but put back on the day <laughs> Okay, I I will I will take that as a to do item. I can make that happen. Thank you. My pleasure. Great, I agree, Chair Lichter. Uh, are there any other? comments or questions observations recommendations i would like to give any other uh council members a chance to speak as well i see dr stitt put something in the chat and dr stitt would you like to speak on that or would you like me to read it from the chat yes ma'am um so I know you had the question about uh, a tool used for measurement, and I'm not sure, Doug, if you're, um, you know, if it's fully part of the PDs that you you have um, already planned, or you know, in the future. But if and and Miss Harvey, correct me if I'm wrong. With the tool, would some form? Are you trying to uh, really measure where we start? and how we end up from you know point a to point b and if so then it has to be and, and again this is I'm, I'm speaking from my teacher head right here <laughs> in the beginning so it's like a pretest. so you're trying to figure out where folks are prior to go either going through the pd or either becoming a, a equity liaison or so forth and so on but in the process of um i'd say the school year or maybe you had a, a, a benchmark of halfway through, then maybe revisiting, you know, that assessment as another form of measurement. Am I right? Am I am I on the same line with you? I, I, I think that's all inclusive. When you look at the example of the CTE programs and transportation, mm -hmm. if we ran the current program through a tool and looked at it, would we say that it's equitable? And that's where we're beginning. We're beginning with where we are. And then based on policies and practices that we implement, uh, then we would implement it through that lens that 
that we agree would say this is an equitable practice. And then we would continue to measure the success of that policy or practice and or practice going forward. So I, I do think that, yes, that is that would be a part of this entire process. OK, I just wanted to make sure I was on the, the right page. <laughs> Are there any other? So this is um, board member from Palm. I'm so proud of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so this has been an interesting, of course, transition for those of you who may not have realized. I was actually formerly with the the planning committee, and and Miss Scott was on the board, so we have changed positions. Um, <laughs> and so I'm happy to see the work continue. Um, I did want to say, so I'm kind of stepping in a little bit because I do have that background. Um, as far as those five priorities, I think another thing to realize is that with the five priorities that um, they can work in parallel. The idea wasn't that we only are focusing on one thing at a time. There's a lot of different things going on. And so we can be looking at at least these five top um, priorities. And you will notice, though, with some of the um, priorities that were identified, there will be crossover. So even as we talk about, like with the CTE program, um, you know, that can be related to acad academic achievement as far as marginalized students, but even it could also be related to um, if maybe we have some more programs available to some of our black male students and that are engaging, et cetera, then um, maybe some behavior issues. But um, I'm just kind of throwing things out there. Um, but yeah, so there can be as well enter like a crossover between these priorities as well. So um, one thing I did want to say from our equity committee meeting, we have presentations from HR on recruiting, and we also have presentations from a group on um, SAT in particular. And so what I'll say to the council members are some thoughts that I had. Um, they were talking about all of the different resources that were being promoted for um, students to be prepared for the SAT. And so I don't know if that's something that can be incorporated into um, one of the priorities somehow, as just far as looking at that and making sure that, it's, that those resources are really being connected with students of color. Um, we did see the difference, of course, in the SAT scores for students of color versus students not of color. And so, again, considering that BCPS has all of these resources, one of my first thoughts or concerns was, well, are people even aware of all the resources that are available? So that would be one. And then for Mr. McCall, he gave a fantastic presentation on the different things that um, HR was doing. And I do know Mr. McCall is part of the um, advisory as well. So maybe you guys have already talked about and connected with the priority relating to the recruitment and retention. Um, so just wanted, again, I, th I see that's how we can kind of all be working together um, towards the same goal. And then um, last thing was an apology. I had sent it to Doug, but one of the priorities, I think it's D, where it talks about the retention and recruitment for the teachers and teaching assistants. Our administrators should also be in there. Um, Mr. Jennings was one of the people as far as the advisory group that in talking through some things, it's important that we also have some supports and mentoring for our um, administrators of color and even Ms. Norton um, as well. So um, that's it. But thank you guys. I think you did a great job today. Thank you. May I say um, one thing, please? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that this is uh, a, an, an overview of our top priorities, uh, an introduction to you all of who the council is, what we do, what was behind it. The CTE, I think, was a great example. That's why I pulled that out of the intersectionality of um, policy and uh, real life impact. So what the goal of this now is to take it to the next step. I mean, it's good to, um, like I said here, presentations. It's good also that we had the equity audit and now we also have our priorities. So the next step is to actually implement 
these things and put them into action so that we can disrupt those behaviors and um, really have an impact on um, creating a, a more equitable system for our marginalized students. So I think our, our next step would be to come back with action items to present to you all um, as a committee that you can then take to the board. Thank you. I, I do agree with uh, uh, Ms. Fremprong. I think we all have a sense of urgency about how we move things forward. And so uh, these, whatever we do doesn't have to be sequential, but can run in parallel processes. Uh, and I do appreciate uh, Ms. Scott, the notion of bringing action items back because there may be some items that I know Mr. Handy's working on now, some that we can begin to work on and implement fairly quickly, and some that are going to take more thought and effort, and we should be able to differentiate those so that we're always moving towards our goal. So I appreciate you all doing that work of separating those things out and, and advising us on what are the things that we can work on now, what are the things that require um, a more a comprehensive effort and uh, how we move those things forward. So thank you. Are there any other comments or questions? Observations? OK, well, thank Ms. you. It's, it's, yes. Oh, I think I think uh, board chair elector had a comment. I just mine was more about yes. procedures, but I'll OK. Yeah. Chair Lichter. Envision, do we need some kind of spreadsheet that is really keeping us, helping us to keep accountable? So when you come back with the action steps, because I'm hearing measurements, action you know, steps, policy, just something to us to figure out how do we really organize all of these different ideas um, to make sure that they're actually being implemented and monitored um, to make a difference. My head's working, but I want to kind of review the PowerPoint. So thank you for that because that lays out this um, priority. So Am I frozen or are you off? You, you're going in and out, Chair Lichter. But we did hear, do we need some okay. kind of mechanism okay. to track and maintain all of all of the work that we're going to do. And I, I think, and Ms. Scott can correct me, but that because this council is moving progressively from those that big picture funneling down to what we're going to, to get our marching orders on. And so. Oh, we can't hear you. I'm sorry. So I, I I'm sorry. I, I I think what we're going to get next, if I heard you right, Miss Scott, is action items from the council. And with those action items, would there be um projected time frames for which you think we could work in this or implement this? Like would this be something something that might be implemented during the school year, during the next two years? Would that be projected out or is that something we need to figure out between the committee and the council? And of course, some of these things, these larger ticket items will require budget discussions and all those things. I think that um, there would be suggested <clears throat> timelines, but I think also some of the things would be um, decided upon by, um, of course, the budget cycle. Um, and then also BCPS, uh, uh, just uh, an example is like one of the things that, that when I came, I wanted the basketball hoops to be up at all of the schools. And so that was an action item I thought could be immediate, but between Dr. Williams and Dr. Scrivens, they were able to get that up and it happened over a period of like six months. And then they reported that back. So it, 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 it will probably vary. We'll suggest it. But then you'll they'll let us know. BCPS will let us know realistically what can happen and if it can be immediate at six months or two years down the road. Great, great. I think those time frames are what help us, you know, stay accountable to the students and the staff and the community 
as we move this work forward. So I'm I'm looking forward to getting those action items and uh, continuing this work. I really appreciate the work that the council is doing. It's very important work, and uh, we we absolutely uh, value it as we move forward with this task. <laughs> Are there any other any other questions or comments? Okay, well, then um, the Ms. next, Harvey. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, before we close, I just wanted to make okay. sure that I know we had some council members that joined after uh, Ms. Cox led the roll call. So I just wanted to make sure that anyone who joined after that, you know, just uh, was recorded as, as being in, in attendance, that's all. So Ms. Cox, I don't know if you had everyone who came in after you did roll, I know yes, uh, some folks in the chat and maybe some emails. Okay, yeah, thank some you. Some people send me emails as well, so I, I did account for them. All right, thank you. Sure. Thank you. So the last item on the agenda is announcements. And the uh, announcement for this evening is the next equity committee meeting will be held on Thursday, June 22nd <laughs> at 4 p.m. Is there any further business? Can I just add? For sale, Southwest Carrier Education Advisory Council. I couldn't unmute earlier. Yes. Thank you. So we have you uh, noted for attendance. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Is there any other further business? Hearing none, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all so much for your hard work and for joining us this evening. Thank you. Great job. Nice. Thank you.